going on, guys? Welcome back to the fourth episode of the Fan Take on Cam. That's my homeboy, Tweety. And we got a lot to get into um, in the NBA and in the NFL. Um, this week, starting off again, we got the Celtics. Um, the Celtics blew out the Warriors um, this past weekend, uh, 140 to 188. Um, a lot of records were broken. Uh, with a game like this, this is the third 50 point win that the Celtics have had this regular season, which is a record for a franchise. Um, it was a record halftime score, um, 82 to 38 at the half, was the biggest uh, halftime margin between two teams. Um, actually, in the first quarter, it was tied 21 to 21, but Boston went on to outscore the Golden State Warriors 119 to 67 for the rest of the game. Um, Steph Curry only was able to put up four points, three assists. He uh, committed two turnovers. He was two of 13 from the field and 0 for 9 um, from three-point range. What do you think about this game, and what do you think it says about both the Celtics and the Warriors? Um, This was a horrible game for the Warriors. This just goes to show that when they're playing tough teams, and Stephen Curry doesn't perform, the Warriors won't perform. And I, I feel like moving on to the season, when we get to the end of the season, we really know what teams are going to do. So, like, knowing that the Warriors can't stand with the Celtics in a weak, weakened Eastern Conference, I don't believe the, the Warriors can win a playoff series. I don't even believe they'll make it out to play in. And I believe they're really in trouble and they need to make some moves this offseason. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it's – this is probably the most embarrassing a game can get. I want to say Curry only played like 17 minutes. I don't think he played the second half. Um, I mean, it was uh, – I didn't watch the game. I uh, watched the highlights and just seeing like – it was like nothing was going good for the Warriors um, after uh, they tied in the first half. It's just, you know, when as you said, and, and I agree, the Warriors go as far as Curry goes and – you know, going over nine for three. I mean, you know, that's first of all, that's not Curry. It's not something that he's going to do often. But just you know, seeing that just nothing went right, and um, the big three all together only scored ten points. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, well, no, actually they scored um fourteen. I want to say uh, Clay dropped six and and Draymond dropped six. So they dropped 14 altogether. Um, but yeah, I, it, it's very rough game. It was pretty, I'm sure it was pretty tough to watch live, pretty tough to watch live. But um I, I think it I think it shows uh, a little bit about the Celtics. Um every now and then the Celtics have a have a, a, a bad game, but um lately they've been on an eleven game winning streak. Um it because uh, last week when we recorded it was on eight game winning streak. Uh now they're um Eleven game winning streak. They're still the first in the East, four to eight and twelve. Um, they just they just both. lost. Oh, they I, just lost. I'm I'm pretty sure they lost last night. They lost last night. Okay. We're gonna, we're gonna put that in the edit. Anyway, when when I made the uh, uh the run sheet for the um pod, they uh, won eleven game winning streak. So, uh, very very powerful team. They're probably my favorite to to uh, make it out of the East so far, but um. Next, we have to talk about uh, another uh, very important team, the uh, uh, Milwaukee Bucks. The Milwaukee Bucks are um, second in the East now, um, eight games back behind the, the Celtics, 41-21. Uh, they, uh, I want to say they're on a season game winning streak since the uh, All-Star break. What do you think about the uh, the Bucks with their uh, small um, – Come back after the All Star break. I believe the books. Um, I believe the Doc Rivers hate was crazy. I believe the books tapped in. You know, use Doc Rivers as Doc Rivers should be used, and he got them together and pieced them together into the team that everybody knew they would be this season. I believe we're gearing up to see the books, Celtics, 76ers, and the Knicks. You know, or the Cavs might be in there too. So I believe those are the five teams you're looking to come out the East. And I don't believe the East is, you know, still that competitive, but I believe the Bucks and the Celtics are 
you know, starting to branch away. So that might be that conference finals that you're looking for right there. Yeah, I, I don't disagree with you. Um, it, it was just tough. It, it, it was uh, a, a rough patch for the books. Uh, as I said in the last episode, man, it's tough. You, you're uh, so high up, but you're um, losing tough games every now and then on Adrian Griffin. You're seeing the frustration on the sideline. You say you're going to fire him. You bring in a Doc Rivers. Obviously, he has championship pedigree, uh, been to the playoffs with, with plenty of teams. Um a lot of uh, playoff disappointment in Doc's career, but um, he's still a, a great coach. And, you know, he's coming in. They already got a scheme set. They already got chemistry set. They already had, you know, a uh, coach staff. The same coach staff. He's just bringing in Doc Rivers. So Doc Rivers got to adjust. Uh, everybody has to adjust. So, um, yeah, I mean, the Bucs just have so much talent. I mean, uh, so much talent. They they got to be able to to, to uh, win win a series too. Um, I definitely think that they're um, the Celtics and the the Bucks are definitely branching out now. Uh, uh, are they're going to be the East powers? I think moving forward. Um, I'm not sure if Embiid coming back. Uh, I do. I have seen that um, Embiid's camp has said that um, if he's ready to go, he he will come back. Um, the Cavs, they're they're a talented team. I don't I don't know how far they're gonna go. The Knicks, they're a talented team. I don't know how far they're gonna go, but I definitely think the Celtics and the Bucks are are the two powers in the East as, as separating themselves from the rest of the pack. Um, moving on to the Lakers. The Lakers are three and two um, in the past week. They why you why you, <laughs> why you <laughs> let, hold, let me go let me go to the single cam. All right, uh, Lakers are three and two in the last week. Two impressive wins uh, over the fourth seeded Clippers and the second seeded Thunder. And the win over the Clippers dropped a LeBron drop 34 points, eight assists, six rebounds, with seven three pointers made. Um, also dropped 19 in the fourth quarter to overcome a 21 point deficit uh, over the Clippers. Um, and a win over OKC, Daniel Russell put up 26 points, four steals, also adding in. Um, Five three pointers. Um, he was hot. He he was hot. And um with that win over the Thunder, um, the Lakers have officially won their season series against the Thunder 3 1. Um, uh, I know you I know you OKC fan. I, I see I see you smiling over there. So well, uh, what you think about the Lakers uh win their season see their series their season series over OKC? I believe it was just complete fluke. I mean, when Chet Hunger played the Lakers and Andy Davis, even when Miami played Andy Davis, I mean, they just forget how to hoop. So I believe Andy Davis is just a tall, skinny person's kryptonite in basketball. I mean, that just might be what it is. And the Lakers, they just they just been hot lately. I mean, they've had the Thunder Edge all season. I've been watching, you know, 3-1 three, three to one is pretty bad for the second seed and the worst team in the playoff bracket. So, you know. It, it, it's, it's bad to lose to a team that's not going to make it out to play in. You know, it's, it's bad to lose to a team like that. Three times is, like, it's like kind of crazy. So, you know, um, I'm proud of the Lakers for turning it around, but it, it won't last that long. Um, okay, I, I would have to say that is, um, OKC is a young team, and obviously um, the Lakers are, 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 are very veteran-oriented. So, um. I mean, we we've seen in the past the struggles that um young teams have with, with veteran teams in the playoffs. If you look at it just a few years ago, the Lakers beat uh the Grizzlies and the Lakers were the seventh seed, once they Grizzlies were the were the second seed. So, you know, Grizzlies talented team, but talented young team, Lakers talented veteran team, and that means a lot in, in, in the playoffs. Um, I'm not really surprised by this. Um, uh, I know in, in recent years. Uh, OKC has kind of sort of had their, their way with the Lakers just because it's so young and so fast. But, um, you know, experience, it, it, it shows sometimes. And with D'Lo, he dropping uh, 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 26, five three-pointers. With, with D'Lo's record, he doesn't always uh, show that in the playoffs. But uh, ever since, um, well, before the trade deadline, uh, he been he been balling. He been he been playing his tail off. He don't want to get traded. He don't want to go nowhere else. 
and uh, I, I don't I don't blame that that uh, LA Sunshine difference. So, um, yeah, we'll we'll see how that how that goes. Our next segment we have the second five minute fire take. This past week, LeBron James became the first player in Bay history to score 40,000 40, career points. Um, he achieved this on March 2nd, 2024. Will Chamberlain on March 2nd, 1962, scored a record 100 points in one game. Um, what do you think is more likely to uh, be broken? Someone scoring 40,000 points uh, for their career or 100 points in one game? I believe if you can find somebody, can, I believe you can have somebody that can find the longevity and the consistent scoring that LeBron has always put on display. I believe that the forty thousand is probably more believable than a hundred, but the hundred is also probably more easier to get because, like, in this new era of scoring, a hundred points is still a lot of points, bro. That's that's a team score a hundred points in great games. So putting up 100, like getting even 50 shots, like that's a minimum if you take yeah, two, that's a minimum, minimum 50, shots. 50 shots. And even if you do take threes, you're still going to miss, so you're going to take at least 50 shots. So taking 50 shots in the game, some whole teams take 50 shots in the game. So you can't just expect the person to come and break Wood Champions record that might not even be real. You know, Wood, one of my top favorite centers of all time, it's still hard to believe that he scored 100 points in one game, you know, off twos. So like it's it's gonna be very hard to break that record. So I believe LeBron's record will be broken before Wolf record is broken. Um yeah, I I can't really disagree with you. Only thing I would have to say about LeBron's record is that you know yes he did score forty thousand points, but he's still going. So it's not going it's not going to end at forty thousand. If he play another three or four years, he might score um what forty five thousand. No, so forty five. He, he if he if he plays another uh two, how many years do you think LeBron is uh, gonna play? How many think how many years do you think he got left? Because I don't I mean, think Bronny yeah. coming out this season. Bronny probably coming out next season. So that's another. Bronny isn't coming weeks. out at all. But Bronny isn't coming out at all. How how look at now? You can't just say he's coming out. You cannot you cannot just put put the 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 thing out that Bronny's coming out. He might come out in two years. Next year, I believe it's still going to be pretty hard. He'd probably be like a 10-point-per-game score with a better field goal percentage. But he's not going to be comfortable enough to come out, you know, just test the draft. But I believe after that next year, after next year, LeBron's going to start decaying. So if Bronny does not decide to come out by his sophomore year, I don't believe they'll ever play together. And I don't even believe Bronny has the chance to make it to the league without LeBron being present in the National Basketball Association. Um. I don't know. I I, I think Brian's gonna make it. Um, as I said in the last episode, he uh, dealt with a, a, a you know something catastrophic that many people don't don't uh, use to walk away from, which is a cardiac arrest, and um, it hasn't even been a year yet. I don't think so. Um, I I think I think he he should be able to turn around uh, next season, especially given you know all season he has uh, this year and um, uh, he can. You know, play with uh, uh, LeBron during uh, his off season. Uh, so I, I definitely do think Bronny is going to make it, you know, to the league some way in the other. But um, but yeah, back to the original topic. Uh, I, I think it's possible for, for LeBron to probably get forty five thousand. So really, when you, when you you know ask this question, you got to consider that forty thousand isn't isn't the end mark. It could be you know. 43,000, 44,000, 45,000, maybe more. So, um, it's, it's, it's definitely tough, but Hey, at the end of the day, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't put 40, um, 40,000 plus, uh, at the grass for somebody to get, um, a hundred is tough, bro. A hundred is tough, especially in the age now where you're talking about load management and, 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 uh, split minutes and all the other stuff. Um, you know, Joel and B scored 70. He could have scored more, but it took him out. <laughs> you know, uh 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 Carter Towns, he he scored 62 in a losing effort. Um they kept 
you know, taking them out, kept taking the ball out of his hands. So I think um, if the game continues to go where it is as far as low managing and, and, and splitting minutes, all that other stuff, it's going to be hard for somebody to get up 50-plus um, shot attempts to make it to 100. I mean, if you go, you no know, 50 for 50, you might do it. You know? but I don't see well, nobody You got to get up 50. That's hard. You can't just get up 50. I mean, if you get up 19 shots, I mean, if you if you make your first seven shots, bro, they're going to keep giving you shots. Like, you're not going to stop shooting the ball. So, I mean. I don't, I don't, mean, know, I don't you know. You got to be very efficient, bro. Like, today's NBA, not, man. Bro, t- bro, today's NBA, co- these coaching styles and medical styles and – Low managing, split minutes, restricted minutes, all those stuff. So basically, you supposed to feel just let you get a few shots. So you, you basically saying they hate, they hate. That, that, you, bro, you know they hate you, bro. Yeah, they hate. They hate. <laughs> that's the end of the time. Well, uh, yeah, man. Uh, next uh topic, going into NFL. Um, NFL all season still going strong. Um. And the Broncos have announced that they will officially release Russell Wilson at the official end of the season on March on March 13th. Uh, this will create a record $85 million in uh, dead cap for the Broncos. Um, the last two guys, uh, I want to say it's uh, Aaron Rodgers. I can't remember the other person. But together, putting them together, does it reach the $85 million mark that the Broncos are going to have a dead cap? for releasing uh, Russell Wilson. Uh, Russell Wilson is the 12th official starting quarterback since Pay Manning's retirement in 2016. Um, the Broncos were 11 and 19, and Russell Wilson starts. Um, the chances of, of his next team, uh, for Caesar Sportsbook, um, this is from this past Monday, is uh, uh, minus 200 for the Steelers, uh, plus... 275 for the Las Vegas Raiders, plus 400 for the uh, Falcons, plus 750 for the Pats. Uh, some outside chances are uh, plus 1,000 for the uh, uh, Minnesota Vikings, plus 2,000 for the uh, Washington Commanders, and plus 2,000 for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So uh, my question to you would be, uh, what do you think about the release? You are a Broncos fan, I know. And uh, what do you think would be um, his next destination? Feels like we just beating up on the topic of my team right now, but um, bro, it's not my fault. It's not my fault. <laughs> I mean, I just want to add that um, the Broncos. I mean, I don't think they made a great decision by um, cutting Russell Wilson. You could have kept the dead cap or whatever, and you know, released them after June first. But I don't know how much more that would have helped. This still would have been a lot. Um, Russell Wilson is one of the better quarterbacks we've had on the team since Payne Manning. We don't have a Great draft pick to try to grab a quarterback. We got other positions we need to worry about, so I don't think it's smart, you know, letting go one of the guy, only guys that you think can keep you over the mark right now. But I don't think we have a chance to win anything championship or playoff wise anyway. So I mean, cutting Russell Wilson is probably one of the moves we're trying to make to get better. But you could have just got a draft pick or two without out of at least you no know, fifth or sixth rounder. And I believe Russell Wilson. Um, the other teams that want Russell Wilson, he just coming in to develop like Pittsburgh and you know ATL, you know Minnesota probably trying to develop, you know that guy, whatever the dude ball dude name was. Um, I, I don't believe he's gonna be a great starting quarterback in the league anymore. You no, know, he might have one more decent season. Um, uh, for me, I, I understand uh, releasing him. I'm pretty sure they they did went through every um uh, went to every team and asked them you know what their trade package would be. I'm sure it's, it's much less than nothing. I mean you know it's you can see the agent in Russell Wilson's game, um, but I mean what, what are you really gonna do? Because if you kept him and you keep paying him money while he's playing, you know, I mean you're not you're not going anywhere. Um, yes, yeah, eight to five million dollars in, in dead cap, but um. You know, at least eighty five million dollars they can uh space where they can, you know, try to get somebody else. Uh you get multiple positions for eighty five million dollars. Um and obviously they, they, they split it over the next um uh, few seasons. Um 
I, I think they saw it. It just said, you know, we're, we're not going to wear Russell Wilson. We might as well just, you know, pick somebody up. They, they probably have a late draft pick. I don't think they have a good first rounder. Uh, they probably have a late draft pick. Um, so they're going to miss out on, you know, all the uh, new guys coming in, like like Caleb Williams and Jaden Daniels and, and uh, Drake Bay and all those other guys. So, um, yeah, I, I think their hands were tied. I don't, I don't think there's much uh, they, they could do. Chances of his next team, I don't really think it's going to be the Steelers. Um, the Steelers came out uh, today, Wednesday, March 6th, and, and said that uh, they're not really interested in Wilson, and they're also not really interested in, in other, you know, free agent guys like um, uh, uh, Tannehill and 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 uh, uh, Kirk Cousins. So I don't really think it's going to be the Steelers. Uh, might be the Raiders. Um, I think for for the Falcons, if they can't figure out a trade with the Bears to get uh, Justin Fields. They might uh, throw their hand in, in in the race and try to get um, Russell Wilson, because you know one luxury about Russell Wilson now is that you don't have to pay him anything because um, the Broncos are are going to be paying them for the next uh, two to, to four years. So you can get uh, you can get uh, pins on a dollar for for Russell Wilson. So hey, it'll, it'll be interested to see uh, my pick. Uh, most likely would probably be the Raiders. Uh, I think, the, and you know, I, as I said, I think the Falcons might get them if they can't figure out a way to um, get Justin Fields. Saquon Barkley is officially a free agent uh, after the New York Giants have elected not to franchise tag him. Um, Saquon is is interested in, in trying to figure out a deal to come back to um, the Giants. He is from New Jersey, and he grew up a Giants fan, so he he's very interested in, in trying to return. But some teams that um, have come up as potential suitors for Saquon Barkley are the Houston Texans, uh, Chicago Bears, the Baltimore Ravens, and outside chance, the Dallas Cowboys. Um, what do you think about Saquon Barkley um, officially becoming a free agent, and who do you think would be a, a good suitor for Saquon Barkley? I mean, I just think that, you know, not franchise franchise tagging Saquon Barkley was one of the biggest mistakes that the New York Giants made. But I feel, I feel like they trending down anyway. So, I mean, you, you just try to get a pick out of them. You try to get a pick or two out of them. You try to see what you can do, get your running back out the draft or something. And I believe it. all the four teams that you listed that Saquon could go to, yeah, they're great options. I mean, the Texans. I don't think that's the the perfect option right there. I mean, you already, you know, got your running back. Well, you don't have a great running back there, but, you know, Saquon can just step in and help. You got the Bear. Justin Fields really needs a stronger backfield, somebody behind him that can rush and, you know, take some of the load off him so he can stop throwing as many interceptions. You got the Ravens, you know. I don't think they greatly need a running back, but I believe Saquon will put them over their level and help them win the championship, finally get out the AFC. And the Cowboys, I mean, they can add some strength next to Tony Pollard, and he can, you know, take the load off Tony Pollard as much, and they can just split split um, runs so Dak won't have to throw as many balls so he can stop throwing as many interceptions. Uh yeah I, I agree um I think the Texans have gained the most traction I've heard that uh he has been talked to the Texans and and there is some uh, some love on both sides um but it, as you said the Texans do have you know two guys in Singletary and, and uh, uh what, what was what's the guy name uh Damian Pierce so they have a, a nice running back room already splitting uh, carry between those two um but you know they have a, a young QB and and um, uh, CJ Stroud, and one thing about a young QB, you always want to uh, have a strong running back beside him. Um, same thing for the Bears. Uh, if they keep Justin Fields or they um, get Caleb Williams or or um, Jane Daniels, hey, get your strong running back to go with that. Um, the Ravens, um, Gus Edwards, and um, what's what's other running back on the Ravens? Um, I, I definitely wouldn't recall. I'm gonna oh, say something. Dobbins, Dobbins, Dobbins. Dobbins. Yeah, <laughs> Dobbins. Uh, yeah. Uh, both of the both of those guys are free agents. Maybe they might try to get on uh, Saquon, who can fill in a whole. Both of those guys. Um, uh, 
the Cowboys, I think that's pie in the sky. I don't think I don't think he's going to the Cowboys. First of all, the Cowboys they got no money for nobody. Um we we finna talk about that with Dak in, in, in the next segment, but um I, I think that's that's pie in the sky. Cowboys think they're gonna get everybody, but they never do. So uh for me, I, I think me being honestly, I think the best bet is him going back to the Giants just because you know he's from New Jersey. Um they they may be able to work out a deal. But if not, I would love to see him on, on the uh the Texans or the Ravens. Uh I think probably his best contending contending chance will be with the Ravens. I don't know how much money they had to throw at him. Uh, the Texans and the Bears got money money to throw at him, but it's gonna be a very uh, interesting situation to see uh, where Saquon ends up at. Dak Prescott, uh, Dak Dak Prescott interned the last year of his deal, and uh, we asked about the future, asked about his future with the Cowboys at a um, children's cancer fund event over the weekend he said he's definitely confident um it's a process both sides understand that everything's great it'll happen um to add to that um jerry jones he's come out recently and said that um they're going to go all in for the next two years which they say they're going all in every single year but whatever it's cowboys uh what do you think uh do you think that is going to be able to get an extension, um, or do you think the, the the Cowboys might think consider letting him go after this season? I think the best quarterback in the league and Dak Prescott is going to be. Um, I, I believe he's going to get an extension, and I, I don't believe Dallas is really where Dak needs to be. I think Dak needs to be in you know. I just, I just think he needs a different scenery. I don't believe he's as bad as everybody puts him out to be. I just believe he's always been in one of those situations where he just doesn't thrive. He's been in the best situation in the NFL for the last three, four years. So I can't just say he's in a bad situation. I just don't believe he's in a situation that he should be in. I believe he has to get to a situation where he can understand pressure and understand um, you know, how to read and react more. You know, better than he's been doing because he's been the, the worst reactor, you know, of a quarterback in the last past years. When it comes to the playoff, he just throws the ball anywhere when he, you know, can't react to what's going on in the defense and everything. So I believe Dak just really needs to change the scenery. And I believe Dallas just isn't where he should be. But I believe he's still, you know, top three quarterback in the league. Well, I don't, I don't think he's a top three quarterback, but, um, um, I'm not. I'm not. A cap- <laughs> they go to Dak. Uh, they go to Dak. That that's a, that's a topic for another day. But um, for right now, uh, I I don't think Dak is a, is a bad quarterback. Uh, I agree that I think he needs to change the scenery. Um, Dallas Cowboys franchise is just curse. Feels like um, I don't know what's really going to change it. Um, I I think he's talented. I, I just think he needs a, a change of scenery. Um. I, I want to say he's going to get extended just because of, of his age. He's, he's in the middle of his career. They've had, you know, 12 and five seasons. I want to say for the last uh, three years. So it'll kind of be hard seeing them uh, part with Dak when, when he should be entering his prime or in the middle of his prime. You know what I'm saying? He's not very young. He's not very old. He's like right in the middle. So it'll be hard for me to see, uh They'll move on from him. Uh and I, and I know he he's very loved in, in Dallas. Um the um uh, the, fa- the fans there, they they really love him. So for my money, I I would bet that he's um going to figure out an extension with the um Cowboys. When when you look at their history, uh even with Tony Romo, I mean, it's been talk where they said, hey, we might get rid of Tony Romo. They never got rid of Tony Romo. Until he decided he was ready to walk, and they uh, drafted Dak and, and, and put him in place. They never really just part ways with, with quarterbacks. They usually um, have a graceful exit. So, uh, as I said, for my money, I say Dak is going to get extended. Uh, recently, Com- Complex has released a top 14 college sports stars in the last 20 years list. Uh, going down the list. Uh, one, we have Johnny Manziel. Uh, two, Reggie Bush. Three, Coach Prime. 
four, Zion Williamson, five, Tim Tebow, six, Kalen Clark, seven, Jimmy Fredette, eight, Joe Burrow, nine, Cam Newton, uh, 10, Lamar Jackson, 11, John Wall, 12, Vince Young, 13, Menti Teo, 14, Andrew Reese. What do you think about this list? The, the Kalen Clark one is just it. Kalen Clark has been out setting the NBA game, man. I mean, you, you just can't have it that low, bro. Like, I yeah. mean, with the people. I, I feel the same with Andrew Reese. I mean, yeah, I do, but I don't, you know, because Kalen Clark is just like, it's like the phenomenal, like, I believe, like, I don't know, because Johnny Manziel, and Reggie Bush, and Coach Prime, and Zion, they did numbers, bro. For their sport, yeah. they did numbers, bro. Tebow, he did numbers, too. So, I mean, Kalen Clark might be praised perfectly. And, you know, but I don't know. Like, the run she's been on, and, you know, we got something else later in the show we're going to talk about about her. You know, she's just been breaking too many records just to not be, you know, one, two, or three on this list, bro. Too many records. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, she, she's been the biggest um, uh, women's basketball star probably since, uh, I don't even know, maybe, uh, 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 you know, Candace. Park. But Candace Parker, she probably had more sign in, in WNBA but than in uh, college. But um, um, I can't um, really think of. Hmm? Well, what, what was her name? Um, they had the. Um, Sabrina? Bernie Garner, Bernie Garner was, was pretty yeah, big. Yeah. I mean, well. Usually in 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 uh, women's basketball, the guards get more love than than the bigs. Um, I mean, she was dunking, bro. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, that was cool. I mean, she, she was cool, having you know, have, yeah, it's, it's cool having uh, a woman that can dunk on on ten foot on ten foot rims. But um, usually in the women's game, it's always going to be uh, a guard. That's why you know Sabrina and, and Plum and you know, um, yeah. Another another problem I, I think I have with the list, I think John Wall is rated a little too high. I don't I don't really think John Wall was was you know and don't get me wrong, he nah, was a man nah, he, he was a man in Kentucky, but I I think I'll put Angel Reese over John Wall. I think Vince Young should be higher than John Wall. Um I mean, right, for sure. I yeah, think John Wall um, should be on the list. <laughs> <laughs> I don't bro, he like don't get me wrong. He was kicking it in, in, in Kentucky. He he was definitely kicking at Kentucky. Um, so if, if you put him at fourteen, I can't be mad at that. Uh, also, uh, Kimball Walker, um, when he was at, at UConn and they and they won the um the championship, he was he he was hey, kicking hey. Uh, in, in college. Hey. Um, yeah, that second year job, that second year job. I ain't gonna lie now. Oh hey. yeah, yeah, job. That, 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 that second year because. Only thing that hurt, only thing that hurt Ja is because he went to a, a, a mid major school. That's the only thing that hurt Ja. Right, right, right. He went, to, he went to Murray State. I think if Ja went to went to a Power Six school, he he probably would have been a lot higher on, on people's list. Um, I'll, I'll move Cam Newton a little bit higher. I'll probably put Cam Newton. For sure, for um, sure. For sure. Mm, it'll be tough. It, it'll be tough. Uh. But I, I do tell you one thing though. I don't really have a problem with 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 the top five. Besides nah. Zion, I might put Zion at five. What do you think about that? I don't know, bro. But if not the shoe, you know. Yeah, that, know. yeah, so, yeah. That, that nigga oh, come out. Uh, how how he jumped that one time, nigga? What? That was all over Instagram, bro. But think, but think about Tebow though. Remember Tebow? But you gotta think. Tebow is a man. We're we're in the, the the social media era right now. Yeah, yeah. Like, as as in stars, I mean. But think you, about what think about what Tebow was on uh, before social media uh, got kicking. Right. T Tebow, bro. Tebow was that, bro. Tebow. <laughs> bro, I know about Tebow. Oh, you remember like, Tebow like that, bro? When we was I, elementary school. I mean, yeah, I, I used to watch. You know, you after you watch that, here comes the boom. You just go to the highlights and everything. You know, Tebow, he, he was that guy. Yeah. Yeah, I, I have a problem with top five. Uh, uh, I, but I do think Tebow should be four, Zion should be five. But I think it's interchangeable. Um, and now, and I'll put uh, get Cam Newton a little bit higher, and get uh, Angel Reese a little bit higher. I mean, Jalen Hurst, Jalen Hurst is one guy I, I would put in there. You know. Yeah, but the thing is, the rough about Alabama quarterbacks. Alabama quarterbacks are kind of systematic. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of hard for what? Alabama. What? You, bro, it's bro, what? it's a little bit hard. Bro, it's a little bit harder to shine in Alabama, bro. 
What sister man, bro? Think, bro, bro, no matter, bro, think about it. No matter what, the star at Alabama will be Nick Saban. Think about that. It was Jalen Hurts for me. I was I'm an Alabama <laughs> fan, nigga. Jalen Hurts is always with Jalen Hurts. Even when Tua was was starting, it was Jalen Hurts, man. I wouldn't wear about bro. Think about how many think about the, the, the Alabama quarterbacks. You got Bryce Young, you got Matt Jones, you got uh, uh Hurts, you got you just um, you just named two guys that are the bottom two. Well, not the bottom two, I, the bottom five. I know what I'm saying. I'm saying but all of them was, was great at Alabama. They wasn't the stars like Jalen Hurts was. But I'm saying, no, I'm saying. My point is, no matter what the star, well, not no more, but no matter what the star in the last 10, 15 years, Alabama was always going to be Nick Saban. Then why Nick Saban ain't on the list then? <laughs> why Nick Saban? If Nick Saban well, is this nigga, why he's not on the list? Well, no, nobody for Alabama on the list. If you put this nigga over there, Henry... Mac Jones. Yeah, they ain't got Derek. Bro, it's gonna be a quarterback. Jameer, come, bro, what? It's, it's gonna be a quarterback. Bro, the court bro, the quarterback always gonna be the, gonna be the star, bro. Always. Unless unless no, unless he's, he's unless he's uh, unless he's a, a game manager type quarterback and you just got a you know a star wide receiver okay. halfback, it's always gonna be the quarterback. The the quarter the quarterback is like a politician. For sure. Speaking of college quarterbacks, uh Arch Manning is the first big name to hop out of EA college football 25. Uh Arch's camp has said Arch is focused on playing football on the field. What do you think about the decision by Arch to not be included in um uh, EA college football 25? Um, Arch Manning, I believe to say you're focused on playing football and you're not even getting in the game is so crazy to say. I mean, <laughs> you're you're rich enough to opt out the game, but why would you want to opt out the game, bro? Why won't you want your name to be bigger? You already get oh. so much NIL money. I don't see why you wouldn't want to get more money. I mean, even though it's too small, <laughs> I mean, you never know what the game might give you as an incentive. Nigga, everybody want to play with you. You're Arch Manning. Right. Like, on, bro, so I don't believe it's just smart to opt out the game. I believe it's just really just an ego move. Like that, that's a big ego move. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm not really sure what, what the big temple point. Uh, I saw, I saw uh, a, a funny post today that says like, um, you you don't have 30 seconds to sign a PDF <laughs> and get a check in the mail because you folks are playing football. Like that, that's, <laughs> uh, I mean, that's hilarious. Uh, I don't really know. You, you never know what's going going on behind closed doors. Um, obviously, to, to me, you would look weird. To most uh, uh, people, it looks weird. But hey, he he's focused on on, on playing football on the field. He doesn't want to be a, a, a red shirt freshman for his entire career. So, um, as you mentioned earlier, Kaylin Clark has broken another record. Kaylin Clark breaks Pistol Pete marriages. NCAA uh, Division One basketball scoring record. Um, Kalen Clark is now the sole owner of the NCAA Division One um, basketball scoring title, regardless of gender. Uh, Pistol Pete, who played three seasons at LSU from uh, 1967 to uh, 1970, scored 3,667 points. Clark now has 3,685 career points after her 35-point game in Iowa's. 93 to 83 victory over Ohio State. What do you think about um Kaylin Clark's new record? Um, I think well, this is definitely the record that I was referring to in one of the earlier episodes. I believe it was episode two, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. That um yeah. Kaylin Clark was close to, you know, closing in on the record. And I just want to add that Kaylin Clark, like, no knock to her. This is this was great. But Pistol Pete literally made that record without a three point line, so I just believe that, that's like that, that's a lot to say. I mean, two, three thousand, three thousand six hundred and eighty. I mean, sixty seven points from just twos is less great, bro. Like twos and free throws, that's great. You know, Kayla Clark. I mean, she's the new sensation. I'm very surprised to see that. You know, I'm not trying to throw gender in this, but I'm very surprised to see that no male has ever. You know, exceeded that record. I mean, I guess the one and done is just so big now that if you do score a lot of points in college, you just won't get that much. 
which I, I think it's not, it's really lost. But, you know, I'm looking at the women's have that aspect of the game to have a long career in college. I mean, because they make more money in college anyway. Um, yeah, I mean, that, that's definitely um, the reason as, as to why it's um, like that. Uh, it's very interesting that um, I think the one and done thing kind of came like, what, mid to late 90s? So, um, yeah, from from at least from 70 to maybe, I want to say Jordan played two years. Uh, yeah, so at least from, from 70 to, to uh, I'll say 90. It's kind of crazy that nobody was able to, to, to beat that. But, uh, I mean, it was a different game back then. And uh, it's going to be – it's definitely going to be hard for a male to try to match it now because everybody is, is one and done or play a season overseas or – uh, try G League out for a year, G League Ignite. So I don't really think a male is going to uh, break it. Um, I definitely think it's it's um a very beneficial uh, that a, a woman will be able to break it because they have to play three years. They can't do one and done like the men. So you know it, it's very advantageous um, for a a uh, woman college player to be able to um, break the record. But I mean, it's, it's it's no slouch. I mean, that's an amazing, amazing accomplishment. That's that's a record that's lasted for what um, four four decades. So, hey, uh, K- K- Kaylin Clark, she's a, a absolute star. Um, amazing record. I don't know how many season games they got left, but she can draw it out a little bit more. So, hey, um, shout out Kaylin Clark, amazing record. Our last topic of the day um, is Scotty Barnes. Um, recently came out a uh, very interesting stat that Scotty Barnes is the only player in the league to lead their team in every single stat. Um, Scotty Barnes is um, first in points, first in rebounds, first in assists, and first uh, steals and blocks for the Toronto Raptors. Um, what do you think that says about um, – uh, the talent that Scotty Barnes and uh, what do you think that he's going to be able to do for the future of the Toronto Raptors? I believe Scotty Barnes is completely keeping the Toronto Raptors, you know, known or he's only, he's the only people keeping, you know, getting them actual wins. I mean, the Toronto Raptors are a horrible team right now. So I believe Scotty Barnes is in a bad place as far as trying to make, get wins. But I don't believe he's in a horrible place. I believe they really need to start making some moves to get some talent and some young help over there and turn the Raptors into what the Thunder did, you know, or, you know, turn them into what the Grizzlies did, get them a trade for a decent center or a decent guard. I think the Raptors need to make moves around Scotty Barnes and, you know, build him. I think that's their guy. Absolutely. Uh, I love Scotty Barnes. He's a very big wing. Uh, rebound, score, play defense, um, he can shoot. I mean, uh, Scotty Barnes, I mean, a uh, very smooth player. Um, and yeah, I, I think um, the Raptors uh, not having that much of a season, but um, they have a very good uh, front office. Um, same front office that, that uh, made a move to get Kawhi and, and was able to um, um, draft Siakam and, and make certain moves. Um, to clear up cap and all the other stuff. Um, I definitely think they're, they're trying to go in, in the direction of the um, Thunder and the Grizzlies being able to dra- uh, draft well and, and trade for draft capital and uh, uh, keep their cap down and all the other stuff. But um, it's going to be hard getting guys to Toronto. I mean, Toronto is almost like uh, – <laughs> Toronto is almost like uh, basketball purgatory. <laughs> You know, it's, it's always cold. Uh, the Raptors, uh, they, they threw all the money, all the food, all the essentials they could at Kawhi Leonard, who, who actually won a championship for them. He said, nah, I, I got to go home. I got to go to I got to go to uh, Southern California. So, um, yeah, I, I definitely think they, they do have the build and, and the template set to try to build them a roster back up. I don't think they're, they're too far away, maybe three or four years, depending on um, 
the the moves and, and trades and draft picks they could potentially make. So, hey, uh, shout out Scotty Barnes for for doing that. That's not easy at all. I don't care what team you want. So, well, I think that's it. That's going to wrap up the fourth episode of the Fan Take. I'm Cam. That's Tweety. And we out. Okay, see, I'm in the thunder. I be feeling like I'm chick. Switch up like KD, Drake Munda. Don't give me a tick. Double team, bitch, in your